Hi, I'm Richard Rogers, and I absolutely hope that you enjoy today's spiritual message. You know, we at Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center are committed to helping people live better lives. We're going to provide you tools over and over, spiritual tools, that allow you to live your best possible life. And if you want to leave a donation, just continue to allow the work that we do to support other people just like you, we say thank you. Thank you for your generosity, because this ministry is committed to making the world a better place. Okay, you ready? So is Christmas, would you say the focus of your Christmas celebration is about giving to others or about receiving? <laughs> we got one person, oh no, it's all about receiving. <laughs> right, what I want you to see, does anybody else have giving stress? Do you know what I mean by giving stress? Like that you so want to meet everybody's expectation that we get into giving stress. Like, like, can I afford it? What is it they want? What would it take to meet their expectations? We get into giving stress. Maybe I'm the only one, but I have serious giving stress during the holidays. Because th there's like, how do you do it? Like nobody wants a cheesecake anymore or whatever it is, right? <laughs> Or fruitcake, not cheesecake, fruitcake, thank you. <laughs> Nobody wants a fruitcake anymore. It's like, so then what do you give them when the world doesn't want fruitcake anymore? You know, gift cards. Nothing says love like gift cards, right? Right, so, so we go into this level of stress, and I want you, what I want to talk about today is getting. And it's like, Richard, getting? No, the holidays are about giving. We don't get like, how many of you have ever said when somebody asks you, what do you want for Christmas, think, oh my gosh, I don't care. All I want to do is live through the holidays. <laughs> like, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. Just please let me meet everybody else's expectations. And what I want you to see for so many of us is that the holidays are so spiritually distorted. They're distorted. Because we are so focused on trying to meet everybody's expectations that we rarely have time for a spiritual experience. And we rarely have time to receive all the wonder, all the good, all the blessings that are available to us at the holiday because we're so singularly focused. Like there's an internal clock. Oh, I just lost that day. I don't think I got enough presents bought today. Right? Or I didn't think I got enough done today. Right? That, that, I'm not ever going to get that day back. It was a Saturday. I should have been in the mall with everybody else fighting it out. Right? Oh, I hear Macy's has got a 50% sale. I should have been there already. Right? There's such a level. Now, maybe it's just me. But there's such a level of giving anxiety. And I want to talk about receiving. And even to bring up the subject of receiving in the holidays, it sounds so greedy. Like, oh, aren't you a little piggly wiggly, right? <laughs> right? Like, I don't really, fo I'm so spiritual, I don't focus on receiving. <laughs> I'm just about the gifts for others, right? And it's like, if that's true, then, then we have missed the whole meaning of this experience, that we are so upside down spiritually that we don't even get how much the holidays is about receiving. How many of you, when you were kids, had to go sit on Santa's lap, right? And the first thing Santa asked, well, maybe the first thing, were you good, right? And then we all lied, right? <laughs> of course. And then the next thing they ask, and, and you know, sitting on Santa's lap has a high creepy factor, right? It, it does have a high creepy factor. And that's why so many little kids hate it. Because it's, it's, there's a high creepy factor in it, right? Like, I don't know who you are. You're wearing this fake beard thing and this fake outfit. I don't see people walking around the street like that. And now I'm supposed to sit on your lap? No. That's just not going to happen, right? So it has a high creepy factor anyway. But then the next question is, what do you want? Right? And, and so many kids just want out of Santa's lap 
right? That they just blurt out the first thing as they're running for the door, right? And by this point, they're screaming, and then they have to get their picture taken, and they're like, it's just a, it's a mess, right? Does anybody else have kids that just hated the whole experience, and you made them do it anyway, because the generation before made you do it, and so it was just kind of what we do to each other is we just pass down the misery from one generation to the next, right? <laughs> Sorry. All right? But I don't want you to miss the spiritual significance of this. Because the Christmas experience is about us being wildly, profoundly blessed. And if we miss this because we're so fearful that we're not going to do it right, like we, we miss the, the best part. And that's that God's got a gift for you. And there is something spiritually significant about sitting on the lap of the infinite. And it is intimate. That the place where God wants to hold you is when you sit on the lap of the infinite and let God hold you in the most infinite, infinite, intimate and wonderful way where the love of God just surrounds and enfolds you and wants to give you all that God is. And it's like, well, I, I really don't have time for this. <laughs> Starbucks is only open till nine. I've got to get my next latte before this whole thing closes down. And over and over again, what I want you to see is it, is it time for you to sit on the lap of the infinite? Is it time for you to come home? I think most of us have heard in one way or the other the story of the prodigal son. And the story of the prodigal son was that a, a rich man had two sons. One of the sons asked for his inheritance, half of everything the father had. So the father divided it all up, gave his son his half, and he went out and said it was in a faraway country, and he lived a riotous life. We're like, woohoo, right? So he had this wonderful riotous life, right, until it, the, the times changed, the economy crashed, and he lost everything. And he was a good Jewish boy. And the only job that he could find was feeding the swine, right? And that was not proper. That was not right. That was not good. And, and they didn't feed him, and, and he would have easily, wonderfully eaten the food that the, the swine was being fed if they, somebody would have let him. And it's, one day he comes to himself and says, even though I'm not worthy of being in my father's house, even though I'm not worthy of being his son, I... I even my father's servants eat better than this. The scripture says he comes to himself and he comes home, right? And the moment he comes home, his father sees him from a distance. He goes out and hugs him, loves him, brings him in, and gives him a, a, robe to, a fancy robe to wear and plenty of food. They, they kill the fatted calf to celebrate with his, that, his, that his son was lost and then he comes home. And what I want you to see today is the one of the critical aspects of really being blessed by God is not only do you have to come back and sit on the lap of the infinite, but you have to come home. You have to come home to your spiritual nature. That when he was living out there, he got empty, he got dry, he got wounded, he, he ran on hard times. And he had to come home. See, a king is only a king in his own country. Right? Other people may treat him nice or not treat him nice, but a prince or a king or a queen is only a prince or a king or a queen in her own country or in his own country that you actually have to come home. That there's a part of your soul that when you're wandering out there feeling separate from God, you have to come home before you get blessed. You have to actually make yourself sit on the lap of the infinite. And that's why prayer and meditation has always been a part of the spiritual journey. No matter what denomination, no matter where you look for thousands of years, prayer and meditation is the way that we come back and we sit on the lap of the infinite and we acknowledge what it feels like to have God as our infinite, unconditional source of good. And yet during the holiday season, how many times have us, how many times do we really spend in prayer and meditation? Who has time for that? There's a sale. You know, so the most beautiful and powerful spiritual time when the universe is inviting us to come back and sit on the lap of the infinite, do we really take time to deepen and broaden our relationship? Like, what would it look like if you actually sat in the lap of the infant, if you sat in prayer and felt the infinite goodness of God that wants to be poured into your soul? 
What would it feel like if you actually put yourself with open and receptive minds and hearts in the presence of being able to receive all that God is? Well, I have to be about giving. Well, you haven't received first. Have you ever tried to give from a place of emptiness? It doesn't work so well. That really our job as spiritual beings is to be, allow our soul to be so filled, so overflowing with the goodness of God that we have an abundance to give to ourselves and our family and our world because we are actually full from the inside out. And now we have people that are just barely getting by whose souls are so empty and tired and broken and sad that if anybody asks them for anything, they say, just get out of my way. I don't have time for you. And during this glorious season, I, I really want to challenge you to sit on the lap of the infinite and let God fill you up in all the dry places, in all the wounded places, in all the places where you feel alone and empty, and really let God fill you up and so that you get to be full and overflowing with how good God is and that you were designed to receive it. See, the thing about the God is God is infinite. So if you get your share, in fact, if you get three shares, if you get your whole neighborhood share blessing, does it make the infinite less infinite? No. The, the whole definition of infinite is it is an infinite, inexhaustible supply. That you're not being a greedy little piggly if you take your share. It doesn't mean your neighbor is not going to get God, that they're not going to get grace, that they're not going to get blessed. It's infinite. And I want you to want God. I want you to be hungry for your blessings. I want you to be so hungry for your blessings that you never miss your prayer time with God. Because it's how you download the infinite. It's how you download the divine. That every day I want your soul to be plump and happy and full because you got a rich blessing every day in your time of prayer. Jesus never missed prayer. Right? He had some responsibilities. He had some people that were counting on him, but he never missed prayer. He took time every day and he'd go sit on the lap of the infinite. In fact, one of the ways that Jesus called God was Abba, Father. But it's a, it's a special kind of Father. It's more like Papa or Daddy. That when he was talking about his relationship with God, it was this intimate, personal, because he sat on the lap of his creator every day and was willing to receive all the good that God had for him. Every day. Every day, over and over again, he would sit on the lap of the divine and he would receive. Like, we're going through Christmas, and many of us are tired and burned out that we haven't really had a spiritual experience, we haven't really looked to God, we haven't really sat on the lap of the infinite and said to God, what do I really want? And really trusted God to fill you up. That over and over again, what I want you to see is that your soul needs to be full if this is gonna be a sacred holy time. If this is just gonna be a time where you, when you move through the end of the year with, with a zero balance in your checkbook and exhaustion, we have missed the spiritual significance of this holiday. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. right? So the first thing I want you to do, the first thing if you really wanna receive the glory of God, if you wanna receive all the good that God has for you, if you really wanna have a Christmas that's meaningful, sit in the lap of the infinite. Not just once. But over and over and over again, until you know God in an intimate way, till you trust the divine, till your soul is filled to overflowing because you went to God over and over again with a hungry heart. It's okay to take a hungry heart to God. It's okay to take a need or an emptiness to God because that's where we're supposed to take it. If you feel broken or less than, that's the place we take it. We take it to God over and over again. We sit on the lap of the infinite and we take our greatest needs and our greatest desires and we take them to God until we finally feel full. And now we, I would love it if you could spend five minutes in prayer and have everything in your life transformed. But for most of us, that's not the way it works. For most of us, we have to go back to God day in and day out. Give us this day our daily bread. That every day we get filled up and our, full, and our soul begins to feel 
a little bit more full and a little bit more full and a little bit more full because we learn that it's safe to sit in the lap of the infinite and be wildly blessed. The second thing. Second thing I want you to really look at is to heal our inability to ask. There's at least 30 times in Scripture where Jesus said ask. He said ask, 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 and then ask some more. Right? He, he, the, the, the idea was that whatever your soul wants, as you sit on the lap of the infinite, ask for it. God, heal my heart. God, heal my body, heal my relationships, heal my finances, heal my work situation. Ask, 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 ask. And when you're sitting in the lap of the infinite, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, so ask for it. Like, could you ever ask for too much if God is infinite? If God unconditionally loves you, could you ever be a really a gritty little piggy? No. You actually have to ask because in asking, our free will acknowledges the infinite blessings of God and is then open and receptive to receive it. If you don't ask, God can't help us. Did you ever hear me say that? Because you have free will, until the moment you ask, you don't get to receive. Not because God doesn't want to give it to you, but your free will trumps even God's desire to bless you. Your free will cannot be violated. And then so until you ask for help, until you ask to be healed, until you ask to be blessed, until you ask for a situation. And one of the things, the challenges I'm going to ask for tonight is, can you think of areas in your life that you've simply never asked God for help? Is there a problem that you've been dealing with for weeks or with months or years that you simply have never asked God for help with? That you've never sat on the lap of the infinite and asked that whatever the burden is, whatever the challenge is, whatever the problem is, ask. Ask. Because it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Ask. Ask and you will receive. Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing, will be placed upon your lap. Ask. Ask. And the third thing I want you to look at is as you're sitting on the lap of the infinite, I want you to ask God to heal any sense of unworthiness. I really believe that worthiness tends to be the master program. That worthiness tends to define how blessed we get to be. And that we don't get to be blessed beyond our sense of what we think we're worth. And, and no matter how infinite God is, that the universe only gets to bless us to the degree that we can hold it, the degree that we feel worthy of it. And if God really is infinite, if that's true, then we actually had to be worthy of receiving greater and greater levels of good. And one of the things I would invite you to heal this Christmas season is any sense of unworthiness that you can only receive so much, that you're only worth so much, that you can only have so much good, so much love, so much money, so many blessings, that every one of us, our, our master program is worth. And you see this all the time in people that are, are wildly blessed and self-destructive that they've actually been blessed more than their worth allows them to receive. And so they find ways to destroy it. They find ways to destroy themselves. And so that they implode their life so they don't get blessed beyond what they've received. And over and over again during this holiday season, what I want you to really ask yourself is, am I willing to expand my sense of worth to let God bless me in greater ways? Can everybody see at least one way in your life where, you've, where you know you're surviving in less good than is available to you? Where you've, where you've drawn a line, where you've limited yourself, whether it's in relationships or in your work or in your finances or in joy or peace. Because sometimes it's just in peace that we're so used to drama that we think our drama is normal. That that's what we're worth is this level of chaos, this level of drama, this level of upset. And what if just in peace alone you were willing to expand your sense of worth? Can you imagine that everything in your life would change because you were actually willing to heal, you were willing for God to heal any sense of unworthiness that you could actually lay hold of the kingdom? 
because it's hard to be given a blank check. But the reality is God has given you a blank check that all the goodness God is is available to you. You just have to find a way to receive it. And every one of us, because we have free will, we get to draw the line. No, I can have this much good in my finances, this much good in my relationships, this much good in my family, this much good in my work. And it's like we get to decide that. Or we can say, no, I'm really worthy of all the good that God has for me. See, I want you to see over and over again that to be wildly blessed, you have to feel worthy of it. And it's hard to feel worthy of the infinite. It's hard, we have to work at that. And we have to work at that over and over and over again to feel worthy of all the infinite good that God has for you. I am worthy of the kingdom. That's even hard to say. Will you say it with me? I am worthy of the kingdom. One more time. I am worthy of the kingdom. Let's say it like we actually mean it. I am worthy of the kingdom. Feel that. Because over and over again, what I want you to see is there's a part of us on the inside that goes, liar, liar. Like, I know what you've done. You're not worthy of the kingdom. You're not even worthy to stand outside the door. You need to go like 100 yards out, right? And so over and over again, as we're sitting on the lap of the infinite, what I want you to bring to God is my sense of unworthiness. God, you know how unworthy I feel. You know the places in me where I don't feel good enough. I'm ready to have all of those healed. See, I want you to be wildly blessed this Christmas season. I want you to be wildly blessed. And I want us to, to, to make room so that we're not doing the holidays the way we tend to do the holidays year after year after year, but we're actually having a spiritual experience where we're broadening and deepening our relationship with God. We're actually feeling God more alive within us because our soul is full as never before. There is no separation between you and God. But I want you to feel that. I want you to know that. I want you to come home to yourself, to come home to your God, and sit in the lap of the infinite and ask for what you want. But then I also want you to be able to receive it and know that it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, that there's no lack in this universe. We have more than enough of everything. But we actually have to be able to hold it inside, inside our soul, before we can really enjoy it. Will you pray with me? I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to receive God tonight. And as we sit in the lap of the infinite, as we sit in the infinite presence of God. God, here's my wants, here's my needs. Here's what's going on. This is where I need more God. This is where I need to be more blessed. This is more where I need to see a better way. This is where I need a new possibility right here. Heal anything that keeps me from asking for your good. And heal all my sense of unworthiness. Heal any place within me, in, within me that has felt broken or less than or unworthy. Restore my soul so I may live this life as your beloved. I'm ready to be your beloved. I'm ready to know that I'm your beloved. I'm ready to feel that and walk in that and live that. I am ready to know the grace of God in greater and greater ways. So in the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks. And so it is. Amen.